Welcome to How to Succeed in ECE Without Really Trying. I'm Dr. Linda DeBrenner, and today we're going to talk about Norton and Thevenin equivalent circuits. Okay, let's start with an example. Here's a circuit with an independent current source and some resistors. Please notice that one of the resistors is labeled R load, and uh, it doesn't have a value given, and that will become evident um, in the future. Sometimes I go ahead and give it a value, uh, which is just one more thing for you to realize that you should ignore. So let's just start here. And the question I'm going to ask is, what is the equivalent? And let's do the Thevenin's equivalent circuit first. So what is the Thevenin's equivalent circuit seen by the resistance RL, R load? Okay? And the reason I don't need to give RLO a particular value is because we're asking that basically if we remove R load from the circuit, what does the rest of the circuit look like? So in other words, if we replaced this circuit here with a Thevenin's equivalent resist circuit, which would be a resistor and a voltage source, okay, what would you use? Now, the technique I want you to use is actually um, a technique that always works. So first thing we do is we remove the re load resistor. And I usually just draw those little circuit circles. They're kind of like a connection point just to give something to point to. We have to find VOC and I short circuit. So let's start with looking for the open circuit voltage VOC. That'll be the voltage across the 6 ohm resistor. And we can solve for that in any way we want. Um, I'm going to choose to use nodal analysis in this case. Um, no, no particular reason, um, except for I usually, I, I, I do a lot of examples where I use mesh analysis. So we'll use nodal analysis this time. Um, also, I, I want to make it clear that, uh, that with, with the, nodal analysis or mesh analysis, it'll work either way. So let's go ahead, I'll give this a, a name, I'm going to call this one V1. I'll call the, the second one is actually VOC, right? And we'll have a ground down here. So the voltage across 6 ohms is that voltage VOC, so I'll just give it the same name. So now let's do uh, nodal analysis at node 1, which I labeled V1 for the voltage. And it will be summing of the currents leaving, minus 4, because that's 4 amps entering, it's minus 4 leaving, plus V1 minus 0 over 2 ohms, that's using Ohm's law. So the voltage across that 2 ohm resistor is V1, and then we just divide it by the resistance 2. So minus 4 plus V1 over 2 plus V1 minus VOC over 4 equals zero, and that's the equ first equation. Now at node, at VOC, at the VOC node, right here, right here that I've labeled, let's write that equation. We have VOC minus V1 over four. That's gonna be the current going this way. And we need the current going here so that will be VOC minus 0 over 6 is equal to 0. Um, and, and one thing to note is that because that's an open circuit, there's no current flowing there. So that's 0. Now we have two equations, two unknowns. Our two unknowns are V1 and VOC. We can solve using any techniques we want. Let me go ahead and show you what would happen if we did the same thing and used uh, mesh analysis instead. Because I often get the question from students, why do you do one instead of the other? So here we would just solve, and we can talk about that in a moment. So if we wanted to use mesh analysis instead, we would have two loops, OK? 
okay we have this loop here and this loop here so we on the surface it appears that we have two two equations i'll call this i1 i'll call this i2 so it appears that we have two equations but we can tell pretty quickly that i1 is actually equal to four amps that means that our, our circuit is going to be a lot easier okay so here let's do the second equation so as we go around the circle i like to go from the lower left hand corner clockwise so the current through this two ohm resistor is going to be i2 minus i1 so you take the, that current times the resistance to which will be the voltage so we were trying to add the voltage from here to here and then the voltage from here to here and the voltage from here to here will equal zero so we have i2 minus i1 times two and the only current through here is i2 so we'll add i2 times four plus um, the only current through that six m resistor is also i2 and that's equal to six and that'll be equal to zero so it looks like in fact it's much simpler we have I2 minus 4, because I1 is equal to 4, times 2, plus 4 I2, plus 6 I2 is equal to 0. So we, what we can see here is that it's actually easier to solve using mesh analysis, because we had one equation that was trivial and, and another equation that was uh, just one other equation. So now we can go ahead and solve let's go ahead and do that and that gives us I'll just solve it by hand real quick 2i2 plus 4i2 plus 6i2 is equal to um, 8 right it's minus 8 on the left hand side so it's 8 on the right hand side and then I add that up and I get 12i2 uh, is equal to 8, which gives me that I2 is equal to 8 twelfths, which is equal to 2 thirds. And the unit is amps. And I'm just going to leave it as a fraction uh, at this point. It's a, a bit more convenient. So now going back, what we have over here is we wanted to know the voltage across that 6 ohm resistor, right? We want to know VOC. So VOC is going to be I2 times 6. which will give me um, 2 thirds times 6, which will be 12 thirds, which is equal to 4, the unit is volts. So that tells us that VOC is 4 volts. So you could go and do the same analysis solving these two equations, and you will also come up with that VOC is equal to 4 volts. Okay, so I'll leave that as an exercise. So that's the first step. We have found VOC. So when we, we do that, when we do find an equivalent circuit, we want to do it in this order. We want to find VOC, find ISC, and then find R theminin. Okay, so now we need to find ISC. So we'll take this circuit that we had. Let me copy it over. So I can cut and paste. Okay, so we want to find ISC. So what does that tell us? Let's start again for a moment. I short circuit is defined as the current through that line I just drew, right? I short circuit. When we short circuit the terminals, the terminals that would originally connected to our load. So we need to solve for I short circuit. Now the first thing you need to realize is that the current through the 6 ohm resistor, that current is equal to zero. And the reason for that is, is when you put a short across a, a resistor, the short has zero resistance, so that means all the current through those parallel you know, a short circuit in the resistor, the current through the resistor will be zero. And that's just something to remember about how short circuits work. 
So since the current threat is zero, it's as if it doesn't even exist in the circuit and I can erase it. Now don't be alarmed by that. It's a good thing, makes everything simpler. Now I can use either mesh analysis or nodal analysis. Um, it doesn't matter which. I actually think uh, it's probably about the same. They're both real simple. I'll define this voltage as V1. And I can solve, I can write the equations. So at the node called, uh, I've labeled V1, we will have the currents leaving will be minus four plus V1 minus zero over two plus V1 minus zero, okay? Because see, again, this is all one node, so it's all zero. So V1 minus zero over four equals zero. And I can now solve for V1 and I get um, V1 times a half plus a fourth is equal to four. So V1 times three fourths is equal to four. So V1 is equal to four times four thirds, which is 16 thirds and the unit is volts, okay? So you can leave it as a fraction. You can convert it to a number. You can make it mixed. So that would be five and a third, whatever you wanna do. Um, again, I, I usually find it's easier to leave it as a fraction, and then at the very end, I write it as a decimal. So now we know what V1 is. So the question is, what's I short circuit? I short circuit is equal to V1 over four. So it'll be equal to one fourth times, what, 16 thirds? So that gives me four thirds. So it'll be 1.3333 amps, right? And how many, how many digits you use, keep as many as you can in your calculator. Again, it's a modeling exercise, so there's no significant dif digits you need to keep in tr track of because they're actually uh, infinitely precise. Okay, so now the last thing we have to do is find our thevenins, and our thevenin will be VOC over I short circuit. VOC, if I remember correctly, was four volts. I short circuit is four thirds amps. So that will give me four times three fourths, which will give me three ohms. And what this means is that we could take our original circuit and redraw it in, in two different ways, okay? So for, the Thevenin's equivalent circuit what we have is a voltage source, which is VOC, and VOC was equal to four volts. Then we had our Thevenin's resistance, our Thevenin was, was equal to three ohms. And then we would connect that to our load. And that's the original circuit, including our load. The Norton's equivalent circuit is very similar. And what we would have is our current source and the same resistance, right? So this is also going to be R Thevenin will be equal to 3 ohms. It will still connect to the R load. And the source was 4 thirds amps. So uh, I short circuit is equal to 4 thirds amps. So we normally would write VT is equal to 4 volts, right? And I, sh and I Norton is equal to 4 thirds amps. Now sometimes we write IN instead of RT, but it's the same number, so it doesn't really matter. Just a matter of how you want to do it. Okay, so that's how you would solve for uh, Thevenin's equivalent circuit. A quick note, if I had wanted to do find I short circuit using a mesh analysis instead of nodal analysis, it would have been fine. I would have had two, two currents, right? And again, I would have noted that the first current there is four amps, and then I would have written my mesh equation. So it's just a matter of uh, how you want to do it. You can do it using the different technique and do a comparison. I'll leave, again, leave that as an exercise for you at home. It's always good to have more practice. And also, the more circuits you do, the more you'll sometimes realize that one technique is simpler than, than the other. 
a lot of times what I do is I write, I write, I, I pick a technique and write the equations. If I decide that they're pretty messy, I might use a different technique and, and write those equations, and then I'll figure out which one I want to do. <laughs> so it, it doesn't matter. Any analysis techniques work. Now, why do we want to write the equivalent circuits? The, the simple reason is sometimes we want to know about uh, how a circuit to the, to the other side of the terminals responds. And so we can do our analysis using the equivalent circuit, which is much simpler. Um, and so it's a, it becomes a, a modeling technique, but it's also a, a convenience in analysis. Okay, that's all I have. I hope you find this helpful. Um, the technique I've shown you will always work. There are other techniques for finding equivalent circuits that do not always work. And so it's, uh, you could certainly learn all those different techniques. In the days of analysis by hand, knowing those techniques was very helpful. But in the case of, of uh, computers are available for complicated circuits, once you know how to write your equations, then you can always have a computer solve them. And uh, using, like, say, MATLAB or uh, another technique. So thank you very much. Hope you have a great day.